Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 11th of September. World can bet on India when ships are down. PM Modi at Semicon India 2024. Two Pakistani men convicted over calls to murder Dutch anti-Muslim media. And congressional medals offered to US service members killed in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday said this is the right time to be in India as the government here offers stable policies and ease of doing business on investments. Inaugurating the three-day Semicon India 2024 event in Greater Noida, PM Modi said India gives an integrated ecosystem to the semiconductor industry and will do whatever it takes to become a semiconductor powerhouse. In the India of the 21st century, the chips are never down. Today's India makes the world believe that when the chips are down, you can bet on India, he said. Stating that a total investment of over rupees 1.5 lakh crore has been committed for semiconductor manufacturing and many projects in pipelines. PM Modi said, our dream is to have Indian-made chip in every device in the world. He also said, the country offers a unique proposition of a reformist government, a growing manufacturing base and a tech-oriented market. Our dream is that the world's every device is Indian-made cheap. To become a semiconductor powerhouse, whatever is necessary, the country is going to do everything. Moving on, India's leader of opposition, Rahul Gandhi, who is on a four-day visit to the U.S., took a jibe at Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and said, as the elections forced ruling BJP to turn to coalition partners for the first time in a decade, the idea of Modi's 56-inch chest and direct connection with God is all gone and has now become history. Gandhi remarked that he does not harbour hatred for PM Modi, but simply disagrees with his viewpoint. He also criticised Modi for mishandling border situation with China. Since May 2020, when the Chinese troops tried to aggressively change the status quo on the line of actual control, LAC, in eastern Ladakh, both sides have deployed troops in forward positions near patrolling point 15 which emerged as a friction point in the wake of the Galban clash. And I can tell you that the idea of Mr. Modi, 56 inch chest, <laughs> direct connection with God, <laughs> that's all gone. It's, it's history now. And he realizes it, India realizes it. Meanwhile, Union Minister Piyush Goel on Wednesday said the comments made by Rahul Gandhi in the US were very unfortunate, stating that the Congress leader on his visits abroad only criticizes the BJP and the country. Goyal accused that he interacts with people who raise questions against India. The minister further said that Rahul Gandhi makes obnoxious statements on international soil and the whole Congress party is aligned with his thinking. Moving on, a Dutch court has informed that it has convicted two Pakistani political leaders of making calls for the murder of anti-Muslim lawmaker Geet Wilders though both are thought to be abroad and are unlikely to serve their sentences. Geet Wilders, whose party joined government for the first time this year after a clear election victory, has lived under tight security for the past 20 years due to death threats. One 56-year-old man described as a political and religious leader from Pakistan was sentenced to 14 years for attempted and actual incitement and threats to murder with terrorist intent. 
The other person was also described as 29-year-old political leader from Pakistan and was sentenced to four years for incitement and threats to murder. The court, however, did not name them. Both were sentenced in their absence. The Netherlands has no extradition treaty with Pakistan. I believe it's very important uh, that the court gave this sign today. Um, um, I hope they will be jailed. Um, uh, I might not profit from it uh, security-wise uh, immediately, but still, in principle, um, it's, a, it's a very good decision, uh, and I applaud the court for uh, doing that. And the court has issued notices to Pakistani authorities after activist Samideen Baloch was put on exit control list and stopped from flying abroad, a move widely condemned by right groups. Arpot. The Sindh High Court has issued notices to the Federal Investigation Agency, the Defence and Interior Ministries after Baloch activist Samideen Baloch was stopped by Pakistani immigration control at the Karachi airport from flying abroad to attend an international conference in Belgium, a move widely condemned by rights groups. Sami's lawyer said that when his client exited the passport control office, the FIA detained her for hours before she was told that she was not allowed to leave the country. This is harassment and intimidation through unofficial means, he said, adding that if she had been added to the exit control list, the law mandated immediate notification to the individual concerned. Meanwhile, the Balochistan government has confirmed it also put the names of several individuals in Balochistan on the fourth schedule under the Anti-Terrorism Act. The fourth schedule refers to a list of individuals who are placed under surveillance or restrictions due to concerns related to national security, public safety or law and order. Human rights organizations have long voiced concerns about the arbitrary use of this law, especially in Balochistan, where activists argue that it is used to suppress dissent and stifle voices, calling for greater autonomy and rights for the Baloch people. The region has experienced decades of unrest due to demands for more political freedom and control over its resources. The U.S. congressional leaders on Tuesday posthumously awarded the Congressional Gold Medal to 13 service members who were killed in 2021 suicide bombing at Kabul's airport during the chaotic U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. The ceremony came as Republicans and Democrats traded accusations of politicizing events surrounding the deadly withdrawal with only eight weeks before the U.S. elections. Democrats have insisted that some blame for the messy end should be laid at the feet of Trump, who began the withdrawal process by signing a deal with the Taliban in 2020. Republicans have dismissed that contention as partisan politics, saying Biden could have ignored Trump's agreement or enforced it, accusing Biden administration of allowing the Taliban to disregard its commitments and failing to be honest with the American public. On August 26, 2021, 13 men and women of valor embodied this profound love while defending this nation at Hamid Karzai International Airport. Their names are etched into our hearts and now into the history of our nation. Nepal's ruling and opposition parties are in a face-off in the parliament over the planned impeachment motion to remove Deputy House Speaker Indira Rana Magar from the post. On Tuesday, MPs from the ruling CPN-UML demanded resignation of Rana on moral basis, blaming her for taking money for arranging visa interviews for six individuals to attend an event in the US. A former minister who had to step down after audio leak of demanding bribe giving his own example, suggested the deputy speaker to resign. This also comes as the RSP from where Rana came to the post is in opposition now and has become vocal against the ruling alliance. Meanwhile, opposition, RSP and the CPN Maoist Centre, led by former Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dehil, have come in defence, demanding proper reasoning and lodging protest against the plan move. जब यत्रो प्रश्न उठाया था वने वहाँ ले अपनो पौध बाटा 
मार्ग प्रशस्त करे के बिग्री तो बाकी सब एक मुस्ट जवाब भेन बाकी कुरा तो कानून ने करला छानबीन को नहीं भोला का निति मेरे सुझाव छ The second international Buddhist conclave was organized in Indian capital New Delhi on Wednesday with saw participation from 150 delegates including Buddhist media personalities from 12 countries. Based on the theme of mindful communication for conflict avoidance and sustainable development, the event aimed to continue dialogue focusing on how Buddhist teachings can be assimilated into modern media practices to address global crisis and enhance trust in media institutions the event witnessed panel discussions ranging from role of media and communication to establishing an asian buddhist media network and discussion on environment and sustainable development uh, the objective of uh, this conclave is primarily uh, to convey the message of the Buddha and its application uh, in terms of uh, conflict uh, avoidance, conflict uh, reduction, uh, conflict resolution, as well as how do we pursue sustainable development. I think uh, Buddhism is all about peace and harmony. I think if you uh, see the history and the teachings of Lord Buddha, is all about sacrifice, bringing peace and harmony to the society and to the entire world. And in today's world where conflicts are so much across the globe, I think that's where I think media has a lot of role hota, where they can at least start preaching and teaching of Lord Buddha. And... That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.